Okay, so the goal of this lecture is to be able to style this header one element. Now, currently at the moment, it's only got the default styles applied to it. I would like to add maybe some style to it by changing the font face, maybe adding a background color and so forth. But how do we actually do this via JavaScript? We know how to do it via CSS, but in a way, JavaScript also has the same sort of syntax as CSS. In CSS, if we add in the style tags, for example, you target it via CSS selector, which we can do. You can say, right, target the header one element, for example, or you could give this an ID of style and we can target it like so. And then also you have the braces and this defines an object. Even in CSS, this is an object because you have CSS properties and CSS values, they're objects. You can have the background color, this could be something like blue, or you could go one of the default colors, or you could provide your own custom color. You can change the font color as well, if you really wish to maybe white or something like that. And then also you have a whole host of other things you can do, but you can see that the syntax itself does look like an object. It does have properties and it does also have values as well, a key and a value pair. So let's go ahead and do this in JavaScript. So I want to go to myapp.js and then I'm going to say document.getElementById and we gave it the ID of style. So let's go ahead and grab that element. So now that we have the object, we also need to refer to it because I don't want to have to keep re-searching through the document again. It's a very lethargic task. We don't want to keep doing that. So I'm going to create a variable called el short for element. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the element and then I'm going to take a look at the style property, which is actually an object. I can take a look at the el. There's my header one. And if I type in dir and say, look, show me the actual object here in the console. If I scroll down, you'll notice that eventually we will have the style object. And in the style object, you'll be able to see you have all of these properties available to you so that you can start to modify all of the available CSS properties. And you can go through all these CSS properties. You can find out all sorts of potentially new properties that have come out, object.fit, orphans, all sorts of properties that you can look at and modify under CSS. They're all listed here. And again, be very careful here because in CSS, we didn't have to put the quotation marks, but in JavaScript you do because it is a string. We're not looking for a variable called blue or a symbol called blue. We're looking for the string blue and that will be assigned to the background color. And then maybe I want to change the color of the font. So I'm going to say el.style.color, access the color property and assign the color white. Again, making sure it's a string. If it's a number, it's a number. And also let's say that I want to set the width just to demonstrate what we need to do. So el.style.width, and you're probably going, well, what could I do, a number here? Well, yes, you can put in a number that may treat it as a pixel value. So let's go ahead and save that now and hit refresh. And you'll notice that uh, it didn't actually change it. So instead of saying 200, you need to actually provide the measurement that makes it a string. So that's very important. You need to make sure that you append the actual measurement. So that's pixels, EMs, points, or whatever else you want. You know, you got millimeters, centimeters, all the rest of it. So I'm going to say 200 pixels width, and that way it will change it to 200 pixels width. So be very careful again when assigning values here, when it comes to widths, heights, make sure you include the measurement and make sure that it is in fact a string. And likewise with your colors here, also you have RGBA and all the rest of it, all the other color modes that you have, again, all need to go as strings. And that's it. So that is actually how you style an element. You target the element. First of all, you get that memory pointer. Then we can target the elements style property or object. That object contains many properties which resemble CSS properties. And then we assign values as you would assign values with CSS properties. That's how we style an element. And what did this actually do? Well, whenever you modify the style, you're actually modifying the style attribute. The JavaScript works with the style attribute. You can see background, blue, color, white, width, 200 pixels. This all came from the modifications that I did 
in JavaScript. And so that is where we get the modifications of styles. Now this is one way to style an element, but I'm just going to comment all of this out so it will in effect nullify the code. It's just not going to be interpreted. And you can see that we go back to the average styling. Now typing el style dot 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 is going to take quite a while. So what we can do is instead of using that, we can say el.style.style.text.css text. And it requires a text string. And you can just provide a simple text string that you can modify the style. So we can say background is going to be blue, color, and the width. So I've just provided a simple string that will style the element. So hit refresh and there it is. I can just do it all in one go with the CSS text. And let's say we have some CSS already applied. Well, then what you could do is you could take a look at using plus equals. So now this string here is going to be added onto this string here, and then we're going to assign it back to the CSS text. So we're not going to erase any styles. If you just use equals this string, will replace this string, but plus equals, they will be concatenated together and assigned. So in this case, let's just set the height to be 200 pixels as well. So I'm gonna do that and we're gonna save this now and hit refresh and it will also add the height. If I get rid of the plus equals, you'll notice it just simply changes the string. It gets rid of all that and it only applies the height. You can see if I hover over it, it has the height of 200 pixels, but it hasn't got the coloring and the style. So let's add that coloring and style in there. Let's change that to 100 pixels height. And there we are, we have our nice little styling and that's both ways that you can style your element. You can do it individually or you could do it this way. And it's better off to do it with CSS text because if you have multiple styles, what happens is the browser renders. So every time you, let's say, change a style property and change to white, it re-renders the element. So we're triggering three re-renders here, one, two, and three. So it's saying, oh, change property, render, change a property, render, change a property, render. That makes it slow at rendering and it can make your page not as quick. I know that it's not a big deal here, but trust me, later on down the line with proper web pages, it makes a big difference. So the idea is use CSS text, you do it all in one go, and then it renders when you apply that CSS text, all in one block. And you can see that basically CSS text is just applying to the style attribute. Notice the style attribute, we didn't have that here. There's no style attribute on this header one, but now there is the style attribute and that's what JavaScript uses. It uses the style attribute and it applies styles to our element. And that is how you style elements in JavaScript. Now, finally, there may be something else that you may want to do. So let's go ahead and save this now and hit refresh. And then what I'd like to do is apply some styles. And these styles are going to be computed styles. So I'm gonna target the element with the ID of style. And then I'm going to apply a background color of blue, the font color of white. And also I'd like to apply the width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, I'm gonna save this and hit refresh. And there it is. I have these predefined styles here. And what I'd like to do in JavaScript is be able to access those predefined or computed styles. How do I do this? To do this, we have the get computed style function. And what this function requires is the object that is the advocate for our element, which we know we are targeting, we are referencing this object via the EL symbol. So the EL symbol is like a name tag for a person. It's just pointing to that object in the document structure. It grabs that object and then it gets the computed styles on that particular object or element. And just before I refresh, you can see that when you select something, you also have this little window right here. So you can select the element, which I've selected it there, header one. And you can see here the computed styles. You can take a look at all of the default options. Now, don't forget the browser does give some default styling to a standard set of elements. For example, div elements are displayed as block level elements and header ones can be displayed as inline blocks or again, block level elements. It's all defaulted and you can see that by default, for example, I haven't set the display, but it is a block level element. This is set by default by the browser's preferences. 
And if I take a look at my index HTML, I didn't set the display property here. So you have what's called the computed properties. The computed properties are the CSS properties that I've applied to it and also the default properties as well. Now at the moment, if I just refresh, nothing will happen because it is running and it is working, but you need to log it out to the console. So it will grab this element, it will get the computed styles, it will return an object with all the computed styles, and it will log it out to the console was window. And here it is, CSS style decoration. We have the object in here, and if you click on it, you'll see all of these CSS properties. And it also shows you the defaults as well, such as margin and the position and all the rest of it. So you have some default computed values applied automatically to this particular element. Now the computer properties are computed properties. They are not the actual style properties that you're applying via JavaScript. JavaScript applies styles, for example, via, let's just add one style in here. The background color is going to be yellow. So I'm setting the background color in CSS. That's not computed. That is actually via the style attribute. Whenever you try to modify styles in JavaScript, it's done via the style attribute. It's not the computer properties. The computer properties come from your CSS files and also from the browser's defaults. But when you want to modify the styles through JavaScript, you'll find it uses the style attribute. Now, there's one more important thing. Sometimes people, and I have also assumed this, that I wanted to override the style attribute. So we have the background blue here in the computed, but here we have it set via JavaScript. Can we override the JavaScript? Because at the moment, this style attribute is taking precedence over my computer styles? The answer is yes, you can. What you do is you use the exclamation mark important. And when you use exclamation mark important, it makes this value more important. And thus it will actually now, even though we have the background yellow via the style attribute, this background property is more important. Now be very careful because if you do this on the style attribute and you say, right, I want that value to be even more important, then there's no way you can override this. You literally, once you have background yellow, this is really, really important. You can't override it at that point. But if you don't have that, then you can just use important on your computed CSS properties and it will override it.